All right, we're back for part two of graphing square roots and cube roots, and this time we're gonna we're gonna transform them. I'm gonna move them up, down, left, right, stretch them vertically, and then the first one you notice that this plus three is on the outside of the square root. So after you take the square root, you're gonna add three to everything, and so when it's on the outside like that, it just goes up, shifts the whole graph up, and so I want to look back on our our old graph. And we're going to take every single point here, shift it up three. So we go one, two, three, up. To the right one and up one, because the square root of one is one. To the right, one, two, three, four, and up two, because the square root of four is two. And then you got the square root of nine, which is three. And so it took our whole graph over here and just added three to every bit of it. And so nothing's changed. We didn't have to plot points. We didn't have to make a table, rather. We just found our starting point. Not necessarily a vertex, per se, but call it a starting point. And just went from there. Relative to the starting point, it's the exact same graph as over here. Our domain hasn't changed because it's just shifted up. Still can't take the square root of negatives and x is greater than or equal to zero. The range, however, has shifted because it went up, and our y values don't start until three. So you notice our range is now y is greater than or equal to three. So, shift on over, cubed root graph. We'll, um, we'll use our cubed root graph from before. Now, this minus three is inside with the x. It's messing with it horizontally because it's with the x. Because of that, just like we did with parabolas, this is going to do the opposite of what our brains expect it to do. Because we have to go to the right before we get to the same value, and so it's going to shift this to the right, despite the minus. This 2 is going to multiply every value you get after you take the square root. And so this is a vertical stretch. It's going to stretch it up and down. So, cubed root graph, this is what it looked like before. We're going to be just stretching it and shifting it. So that middle center starting point, one, two, three to the right. It's going to look very similar to this, but it's going to stretch it out this way. And so every change in the y value is going to be multiplied by two. So before we went to the right, we went up one. Now we're going to multiply that one by two. Before we went to the left one, and we went down one because the cube root of negative one is negative one. Now we're going to multiply that by two and get negative two. So it's just doubled our y value. We're going to run out of room if we go to the right a little bit, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the right because we're dealing with cube roots again, and we'd go up four. One, sorry, go up two because the cube root of eight is two, but we're multiplying it by the two. So we go up four. We're going to do the same thing, but the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. And there's our graph. All right. So there's our cube root graph stretched and shifted. Our domain and our range. You'll notice that our x values, we can still plug in anything. Cubed roots aren't a problem, and so our domain is still all real numbers for the cubed root. And our range, again, the y value is not changing very quickly. A little quicker than last time, but still all real numbers. All right, let's switch back over to, to square root. And we'll look at square root of x plus 3 minus 1, and then this negative 3 out front. First off, let's deal with this plus 3. The last one, we had a minus 3. It shifted it to the right, so plus 3 is going to shift it to the left. This minus 1, just like our plus 3 in the first transformation, is going to subtract 1 and going to shift every single thing down. This negative is going to flip it upside down. And so rather than growing, it's going to flip it upside down. So we're going to go to the left 3 
and down one. So this is going to be our starting point. And sorry, this, this three right here is our vertical stretch again. And it's a vertical stretch by three. So we're back to square root, so that means we're dealing with one and four and nine. And so usually we go to the right one, square root of one is one. But we're going to multiply that by a negative three. So we go down instead of up. So we're going to go down one, two, three. And again, it's relative to that starting point. Going down, not from the x-axis, but down from this negative one line. Down one, two, three. Usually we'd go over to the right one, two, three, four. Square root of four is two. But now that that two is being multiplied by the negative three. And so now we're going down two times negative three is negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Finally, if we go over nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'd usually go down 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. But we're going to multiply it by 3 because of the vertical stretch. So we're going to go down 9. So now with our box being 10 down, we're going to make it look like this. Again, the square root is ending. And so this is where we are. Notice very similar shape, but it's flipped upside down. Shifted to the left 3 down one, and every vertical change is now multiplied by that negative three. This vertical change, we went square root of one is one, now it's negative three. Vertical change of two, because the square root of four is two, now it was negative six, two times negative three. Square root of nine is three, but now the square root of nine is multiplied by negative three, three times negative three, we went down nine. Domain and range? doesn't start till negative 3 now because we shifted to the left 3. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3. The range y is less than or equal to negative 1. We've had greater than or equal to to this point, but now it's less than because we flipped it over. All right, last one, a little cube root graph. So we've got minus 2 opposite of what we think with the x, so it's moving it to the right, plus 3, moving it up. So we move to the right 2, up 3, 1, 2, 3. That's the center, just like this one was over here. But now we're shifting it to the right 2 and up 3. Same general shape. We're not stretching it, not shrinking it, and so it's going to have the exact same shape, to the right 1 and up 1 to the left one and down one because the square root of one, sorry, the cube root of one is one, cube root of negative one, negative one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Cube root of eight is two. Cube root of negative eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Again, we're using eights because eight's a perfect cube. And so now, just fill in your general shape, and you're good. There's our center point, if that's what we want to call it, and our domain and our range, all real numbers, all real numbers. You might get very, very much used to that with our cubed root graphs. And that's a little bit of transformation of square roots and cube roots.